So this week's update from uh, IHME's COVID-19 modeling efforts, uh, there's some several important trends around the world. Uh, in Starting in North America and in Europe, we are seeing continued Delta surges. Uh, interesting news that in at least the Netherlands and the United Kingdom, those surges have peaked and started coming down. And it's actually hard for us to understand quite why the peak has occurred. We're also seeing this general phenomenon, despite big surges in many countries, US is now one with, with quite a large surge uh, that covers essentially almost all, st all states in the US. Uh, we're seeing a disconnect between the number of cases and hospitalizations with the number of deaths. And I think this holds out great promise for uh, or hope for the future that um, the vaccination efforts, the fact that the vaccines seem to have sustained ef efficacy or effectiveness uh, against hospitalization and death, not so much for infection, but they do seem to work in over the long haul for um, hospitalization and death. Perhaps that's why, and that most countries, even though they haven't re reached everyone they want to reach on vaccination in Europe and in, in North America, have preferentially vaccinated those at greatest risk of death. So that's one explanation. Another explanation is that the recent surge in many parts of uh, Europe and North America has seen much greater transmission in younger people where the infection fatality rate is much, much lower. And so we'll have to wait and see as the data uh, accumulates as to which of those explanations is the, the key reason for the disconnect. There is some warning signs that there are places in the US like Arkansas or Louisiana or Maine where deaths have started to go up or Scotland where deaths have started to go up. Uh, but the rate of increase there is slower than, than um, cases and hospitalizations. Another critical aspect of all the discussion globally uh, for COVID-19 has been the evidence that's emerged from uh, Israel, particularly on waning immunity. That it seems that even for the mRNA vaccines, the ability of the vaccines to prevent infection wanes considerably over time may be as low as 40% on average after a few months and could for the Delta variant be even lower. Now we've built into our models, not waning immunity, but much lower efficacy of uh, vaccines against infection compared to severe disease based on the trials and other studies that are out there. And we are working on including this new issue around uh, waning immunity into the forecasts. So some of our forecasts this week and in previous weeks may actually be more optimistic than they should be once we build in that issue of waning immunity. In other parts of the world where uh, Delta surges are really strongly underway, Southeast Asia being the most uh, dramatic, but also places like Bangladesh, Iran, Iraq, now Lebanon, uh, many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, and of course, Mexico, all having considerable Delta surges. Uh, these are settings where uh, vaccination rates are, are not constrained by demand as they are in the US and, and a number of high income countries, but they're really constrained by the supply of vaccines. And that remains the sort of overwhelming need to see more vaccination reach uh, those populations. In the absence of getting redistribution of vaccination, you know, the main strategies to manage the epidemic uh, in those settings are going to be the mainstays that we've had throughout the pandemic, which is uh, promoting mask use. Fortunately, US CDC has changed their guidance in the US. This may have some influence in other countries of getting the vaccinated to wear masks. That's uh, going to help put the brakes on transmission. But in the places with really large surges uh, and relatively low vaccination, uh, some of the stronger social distancing mandates may be needed to uh, uh, keep the death toll from being uh, really large. So that's the sort of view around the world. I think the, the main, if you step back from it all, uh, most of 2020, we had about 5 million infections a day. We had a period in April when the huge outbreak in India brought the number of global infections up over 10 million a day. We're now settling into about 6 million infections a day. So 
COVID is now worse uh, than it was in 2020 on average at the global level in terms of infections. It is certainly not over. And uh, we suspect that it will be a challenge for the world and for most countries uh, for the next year or quite a bit farther. 